Hello everybody, it's Dr. Carmen Bryan and welcome to my YouTube channel. This is Redefining Yourself, a program where I'll talk about overcoming narcissist abuse. Thank you guys so much for all the new subscribers that have come. Thank you for all the comments, thank you for the emails, and thank you for the uh, video suggestions. And to all the kings out there, thank you guys for joining us ladies, these queens here, and giving us your experience about narcissist abuse. You know, I, I say it over and over again. In the beginning I started off and I was really focused on helping the women because the women were the ones who had reached out to me. But now as I continue doing the videos, a lot of the men are stepping forward and are not afraid to admit that I have been in a situation where I had a narcissistic female or, you know, in, in, a, in a narcissistic relationship. So thank you guys so much. As you know, that domestic violence for men is really underreported uh, and most of the time is not reported because most people don't believe that a man can be abused. I've even had people ask me, is it possible that a man can be abused? Yes, yes it is, and yes, uh, just like females going through narcissist abuse, men go through narcissist abuse as well. And so if you have not already, please subscribe to my channel. It is Dr. Carmen Bryant, Overcoming Narcissist Abuse. Hit the um, subscribe button and then hit the bell so you know whenever I upload new videos, usually Tuesday through Friday, and then on Sundays I do come on live between eight and nine Pacific Standard Time. Please join me this Sunday, so that is on the West Coast. So please join me this Sunday. Come in and ask me questions. Come in and, and, and talk. You know, you guys let me know what's on your mind. Let's talk about some things. And I really appreciate all the support. Thank you guys so much for sharing the channel. You know, share this information. Share, share, share. A lot of people have been watching the, uh, the YouTube channel and I'm getting a lot of calls and people that are coming into my office. And I really appreciate you guys reaching out and needing help and wanting to come and finding something valuable, I have to say, and the uh, opportunity to help you. Uh, I also have a uh, Facebook channel channel, a Facebook page, um, Psychological Health Consultants and Services. Hit the thumbs up. I do post videos on there as well. And so today's topic, I wanted to talk about those of you that have been, that come from um, narcissistic parents, narcissistic parents, and, and some of the, um, you know, some of the residual uh, or some of the side effects of being, you know, in a narcissistic home and what has maybe made you or has created uh, that magnetic pull for narcissists, what made you susceptible to, um, you know, a narcissistic relationship? You know, if you don't recognize it, then how can we change it? You know, and the way that we change is by recognizing what we've been through or where we come from. And so I went to, and before I start, let me just say this part. So I went to psychology today and there's uh, Eleanor Greenberg. She's a PhD, uh, understanding narcissism. And she talks about how, uh, how do children become narcissists and so what type of parenting leads children up to NPD so I didn't want to focus on that we can focus on that a little little later uh, but I do want it to say that narcissistic personality disorder this is what she's saying are a byproduct of certain childhood environment family environments all children want their par parents approval and attention children adapt to their homes and often most productive and reasonable adapt adaptation to some home situations is to become a narcissist. Uh, and so remember narcissism, narcissistic personality disorder, and not everyone that comes out of a home with family members that are narcissistic, um, you know, family members or, fam or parents that are narcissists, you know, they may not uh, evolve into or become a narcissist. It's in developmental stages where there has been some type of trauma uh, in those developmental stages. And, um, you know, uh, uh, the, as I said before, narcissism is like a defense mechanism gone wrong and turned in on itself. Uh, and so uh, she did talk about, uh, for example, um, let's look. Okay, well, that's the part I want to give you. There's another um, okay, so here is uh, Mr. Matteo Soul, and he's, uh, his site is called LoneWolf.com, and it talks about uh, narcissistic mother and fathers, and like 19 signs you were raised by a narcissistic mother or father. Uh, so go to his site, go read that. I'm just going to give you little bits and parts of it um, that I found really interesting um, that kind of uh, made us susceptible to... Um, narcissistic relationships and to address that to recognize that in you and to address the, these issues um, is to be able to try to demagnetize yourself from attracting another narcissist because a lot of times you attracted a narcissist didn't realize you were attracting narcissists because you didn't realize you've had some childhood hurt or childhood trauma or childhood pain just coming from a family or from mothers and fathers that were narcissists and so here um, let's see uh, let's look, 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 look. Let me scroll down. And so here he talks about um, 
two kinds two kinds of narcissistic parents. You have the engulfing narcissist, um, and these are the parents who see their children as extensions of themselves. In other words, engulfing narcissistic parents become obsessively involved in your life to an extreme extent. They don't respect your boundaries or acknowledge you as a separate person. These are the type of parents that uh, even when you get older, they don't see you as an individual person. They live vicariously through you. And so, um, you know, they may force you um, to get an education or to pursue certain things because this may have been something that they wanted to do or they see that, you know, their achievements comes through you. Um, they also have no boundaries. And so their perception is I'm your mother, I'm your father. And so you do as I tell you to do and I can do this or I can, oh, I'm your mother or father. I can come in the bathroom if I want to come in the bathroom or uh, I saw you naked when you were a child. So I can come, come into to bedroom, right, in the bedroom or in the dressing area that you're in. Uh, these are also parents that as you get older, uh, you'll find that um, they're always over involved in your family. They come to your house and tell you how to run your household or they always, they're opinionated. So they're always telling you how to raise your children or how to cook food or, you know, they, they, they start arguing with you they walk around your house as if they live there and their excuse is usually that you know I'm the mother um, you know I, I raised you you know I you know things that they say to you or you know that they're, they're very they come in your home and they take over your home you know you have no say in your house anymore because now it becomes our house it's not your house anymore or you and your husband's house anymore now it becomes our house and and they take over they take control they're opinionated uh, a lot of times they talk too much you know they they don't care even if you want some quiet time they barge into your room and have conversations or if you're in the middle of conversations with people they just barge in and start having a conversation and when when you let them know that that was rude they say well I'm the parent I'm, I'm the oldest and so I get the you know I'm the parent you know I can do that I'm, I'm privileged to do that so these are those engulfing narcissists. Then you have the ignoring uh, narcissists. These parents uh, have little or very little interest in their children. So these are the parents that may not come to their basketball games or sporting events. They don't come to any of their achievements or ceremonies that they have in school. So the kid is like left by themselves. They don't help them with homework. You know, they, they really, they, they're just a kid in the house that's kind of like on remote control. So, you know, the, the parent is not really parenting. Um, so the ignoring narcissist clearly sees, see the boundary between themselves and their children. Oh, they ignore the ignoring narcissists clearly see the boundaries between themselves and the children. As a result, they neglect to take care of the children or show any active interest in their lives. And so it doesn't matter what they do. They're just kids and they're there. You know, they, they you know, when they're babies, they do what they have to do. And then you're on your own, you're on remote control. And so they really don't have time to invest in their kids. They don't take them anywhere. They don't do anything with them. And so you find that these kids become very lonely. Um, um, they find things to do for themselves, you know, uh, but they kind of almost raise themselves, you know, because the parent is an absent parent, even though the parent may be in the home. Uh, and so he gives um, some 19 signs, uh, in which I'll elaborate on a little bit, um, of a narcissistic mother or father. And so uh, one is that they try to control you through codependency. So in other words, um, your parents may have said, your mother or father may have said, don't leave me, I need you, you know, I can't live without you. You know, this made it impossible for you to live an autonomous life or establish independent priorities other than catering to the needs of your parents. To include if you move move and, and move away and, and establish your own household, they have to find a way into your home. I can't take care of myself, you know, uh, or, you know, what am I supposed to do? And I need family around. And so they, uh, they become that unwelcome guest that never leaves, you know, or they, they move in with you and then they don't go anywhere. Uh, and they become almost uh, uh, obnoxious, very obnoxious and, and take control of your house. It's like they have taken control of your house. You have no control of your house anymore. Uh, but these these are the ones that they, they have to have you. They, you. You have to take care of me. Don't You can't leave me. So they, it's almost like a codependent circle. <clears throat> they laid on the guilt, the guilt real thick. So another method of controlling you was to constantly guilt trip you into doing what they wanted you to do. They may have told you, I've done so much for you. I've sacrificed everything for you. As a result, you feel indebted or obligated uh, to them. And though you owe them your complete obedience. <clears throat> so it doesn't matter what you do or what you say, or if they need money, they always make you feel bad. They, they guilt trip you. They, you know, they, they manipulate you into getting what they want from you. The, uh, the, you know, the, 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 the narcissist, narcissist behavior. Uh, and so, uh, so parents, they guilt trip you. 
you know, uh, even if you decide to have boundaries, they guilt trip you into, oh, he or she doesn't care about me. And you see how horrible they treat me and they'll, they'll get the flying monkeys. Sometimes the, you know, the siblings become flying monkeys un unknowingly and, and all the, you know, they contact all the siblings to talk about you and how terrible you are because you put up boundaries and you won't allow them control or manipulate you. So they'll call the siblings and the family and talk about you and dog you out. And oh my gosh, I can't believe that he or she would treat me this way. And so, of course, they get the flying monkeys to do the work. And so the flying monkeys, you know, like I said, unbeknownst to them, the siblings become flying monkeys and contact you. And how can you treat your mother or father that way? That's the only mother and father you have. You know, one day he or she's going to die and, and, you know, the guilt trip. And so they'll use, they'll even operate through the flying monkeys. Um, and so let's see. Number three, they only loved you when you did what they wanted. So it's that conditional love. Uh, parents withdrew love very easy. Remember, if you guys go back and watch my trauma bonding, uh, this is something that they do. They trauma bond their own children. So they'll give you love when you do what you want them, what they want you to do. And then if you don't do what they want you to do, they almost antagonize you to force you, they harass you, they keep talking to you to change your mind. You know, it's just like what the narcissist does with a person that's in an intimate relationship with them. Uh, but the parents do that. So if you fail to do what they want you to do, they'll either punish you severely or give you the silent treatment. So they'll walk around the house and not even talk to you. Uh, you have the impression that they loved you, but you prove you have to prove your worth to them. And so you'll find yourself always trying to prove yourself, you know, uh, but you have to prove your worth. You have to prove that you deserve your parents' love and affection and attention. And so, but when you don't do what they want you to do or to compliment them or to give them money or to, you know, anything, then they will punish you. They'll give you the silent treatment. They'll harass you. Or if you don't do it, they'll follow you around. They'll, they'll keep on talking about the same thing over and over again until you're forced to change or you feel obligated to change your mind and make them leave you alone. Parents do that too. Um, they like to get, and this is the narcissist parent. They like to get even with you. Uh, when you did something wrong or against their will, even in the smallest way, they made sure they punished you. This petty and childish way of getting even may have been subtle or very obvious. For instance, they have you may, they may have deliberately sabotaged something you cared about, broke something of yours, or hit something to get you back. Uh, you tell them no, and then they'll say no on some on something bigger, something like air. <laughs> you know, can I have air? No, and and the punishment is because you told them no, you can't wear my outfit or no, you know, that that is not right, stay out of my boundaries, you know. Now that's a little exaggerate, but you know, the air. Uh but but they they'll they'll punish you even as adults, they'll punish you for not doing something they wanted you to do. And it's little silly stuff that they punish you or uh comment they make little comments to people or you know, they try to uh you know, uh you have social media now. And so a lot of times the same way that the narcissist will try to harass you on social media or make little marks or throw little hints out there to you or and you know no one else knows that they're talking to you but you know that they're talking to you sometimes parents because remember even the parents as a narcissist they still don't operate at the level as an adult you know uh, uh, emotionally and a lot of times you know uh, mentally and so they'll fight back with you you know like kids do and they'll even fight back on you on social media you know make little comments uh, make little posts and you know that they're talking to you, you know, no one else knows that, but you know that they're talking to you so that they'll fight back on social media. They're, anything, any little thing that they'll do, they'll talk, talk about you to your kids, you know, and talk about how horrible you are. They'll, they'll make comments about the mother or father, your mother and father, you know, they'll make comments to your children to try to, uh, um, what's the word I'm looking for to, um, smear campaign you to your own kids. And so, you know, as, as long as they're getting what they want, then you're wonderful. But as soon as you hold, you know, stand up and you hold up your boundaries, uh, they'll, they'll go after you. They'll go for the jugular, even with your, through your children. They'll, they'll smear campaign you through the siblings, through the family members. They'll do it. Make you feel bad about yourself. Uh, so the next one is they never respected your boundaries ever. Uh, there wasn't any private space to call your own growing up. So it's like everywhere you went, there they were. Uh, you know, you know, children need private space too. You know, they need some privacy. They need, you know, uh, but the parent, the narcissistic parent, you know, this is my house. There is no privacy in my house. You know, kids need privacy too. I'm not saying to do something illegal, but you know, kids need a little privacy too. Uh, your parents uh, would go through your room and private belongings, read your journals, read your diaries, you know, go through your stuff, dig through your drawers uh, without a thought, sometimes even use what they find against you. So it's almost like 
um, it's, it's almost like your parent becomes a lover. And I don't mean lover in a sexual way. It's almost like you're dealing with a person that you're dating. Like they're trying to find something on you. It's almost like, okay, are you the parent or are you like the boyfriend or the girlfriend? You know, um, they compete with you. So remember we talked about uh, narcissists and competitions. Uh, if you ever got something nice, they took it from you or got something nicer to outdo you. Uh, or sometimes, um, and, and sad to say, you know, there are some... Um, mothers and fathers that will actually go after your ex-boyfriends and girlfriends and actually have a sexual relationship with them or sleep with them because they're competing with you. Um, they may do things like, um, you know, if, if your crew or, or the level, you know, the age that, that you're in, you know, they're sagging, you know, mother, father, or, or father's got to sag. You know, what does the old man do in sagging? You pull your, pull your britches up, pull your pants up, do something, get away from here, you know. Or, you know, uh, uh, they rap, so the mother, father got to rap too, or they strip, so mama got to go strip too, you know, well, men strip too, but, you know, so it's always a competitive thing, you know. Um, you get a bun this big, you know. The next thing you know, they look like Marge Simpson, you know, because they're outdoing you. So they'll compete with their own children because they look at you as competition. Uh, so some of you have grown up in households like this. Um, they owned your accomplishments. So whenever someone complimented you on your achievements, uh, your parents would instantly jump in and shift the attention to themselves. For example, if someone congratulates you on winning a soccer trophy, your parents would butt in and say something along the lines of, yes, she gets it from me or he gets it from me. It's always athletic. Uh, I was always athletic as a child. They love the spotlight and frequently stole it from you. So you model, they model too. Uh, you know, you... Uh, anything that you do, you know, you your, your uh, professional degree, your professional degree, you know, uh, they brag about you. And so you feel all good, you know, that the parent is bragging about you. And, you know, that's my son. That's my daughter. They got this education. They're a nuclear physicist, a veterinarian. You know, the only reason why they're bragging is to get the attention to themselves. See what a great parent I am, you know, because if it wasn't for me and, and oh, my gosh, and all the hours that I used to work to put them through school and, and, and oh, my God, you know, I was sick and, and I was still trying to make it for my kids. And, and, you know, and you're looking at them like when I went and got my college degree, I was out of the house and I was gone. You know, I had nothing to do with you. But they're going to focus that attention because if you're getting attention, they're competing with your attention. So they got to put this spotlight back on them because you are a piece of their, your property and you're an extension of them. Um, they constantly lie to you. So whenever someone complimented your achievements, your parents will instantly, oh, I already said that, they constantly lie to you. Your parents lie to manipulate, control, and take advantage of you in some way, uh, shape, or form. So remember, that's the same thing when we were talking about the uh, the narcissist and, and the compulsive lies. Well, if you're dealing with, you, you're dealing with a romantic relationship and you're looking at the narcissist, you know, and how they lie, compulsive lie, they lie about everything. Well, the parents did the exact same thing. And the narcissist that you were dating is probably someone's parent as well. And so you may have went through the exact same thing, constantly lying to you. Uh, you'll never know what could trust, what, what you can trust is being real or truthful around them or whether they're setting up a hidden trap for you to fall in. They'll lie about everything. They'll lie about their nationality. They'll lie about where they come from. You know, they got all the world in them. I think all of us got a little bit of the world in us, but they got all the world in them. You know, one week they're Chinese and next week that they're, 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 uh, they're from Mars, you know, so you know, they, they, they lie about everything. You don't even know, you don't even know, where was I born? You know, are you my parent? You know, do I belong to you? Uh, so the, the same thing as romantic relationships is the same thing with parental um, uh, narcissists. Um, they never listened to you or cared about your feelings. Uh, you felt that you could never share your feelings with your parents because they would either make fun of you or talk about themselves instead. Or you have a hundred degree, uh, you know, you, you're 103 um, fever and, but by the time you tell them you know you need to go to the hospital they're at 500 degrees they're at broil and so you know i survived at broil so i know you'll survive at 103 you know um it, and it's just like with a, a romantic uh, a relationship you know the the narcissistic parent is like i share my feelings but you never change i tell you this offends me or this hurts me and you just you know you apologize and you sound really they sound very very um uh, not compassionate, but they sound very sincere in their apology and everything, but they go right back and do the same thing like they didn't hear anything that you said. And if you confront them, they'll look at you like, what are you talking about? 
oh, you know, you're right. You know, or they're always ex explaining, they're always justifying, or they're always apologizing for the exact same thing, but they never change. So that means they're not really paying attention to what you're saying. They're going to do what they want to do. They're just trying to get you off their back or you held them accountable. They, you know, could hang up on you, you know, or, but they, they don't listen to you. You know, it's all about what they feel and what they think. And if you present something just like, remember in the romantic relationship, just like the parent, you present them with something, um, you know, and they may, they may become hostile. I'm the parent and I know what I'm talking about. I'm older than you. Uh, you know, I'm older than you and I know more than you and I've been around longer than you have. And you're thinking like, man, you don't want to be disrespectful. You're like, my parents kind of dumb, you know, uh, but you don't, you don't be disrespectful, you guys. Um, so let's see. They constantly insulted you. Your parents berated, demeaned, and harassed you on a constant basis. They they may have uh, even latched onto an insecurity of yours and use it to humiliate you. They'll do it in front of your friends. They'll do it to people that don't know you. They'll do it to guests. They'll do it to other people, but they constantly have something negative to say about you. If you achieve something or if you if you come up, you know, you got to come up, you know, and if you've done something well, because people are complimenting you saying something, they immediately have to go to negative things about you. You know, they always have to say something negative about you um, and 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 they, they don't have a problem doing it in front of family friends you know they don't have a problem strangers they'll talk about you in front of strangers you know always have something negative to say to you know people look at you a certain way but they have to tear down that image that people have of you you could be a, a really great person but the parent will tear you down they always have something negative to say um, they exert explicit control over you in other words when you didn't obey them they will punish you the message was very clear obey me or I'll punish you so they'll take they'll take um, discipline above and beyond they'll take it beyond discipline and take it to abuse they will abuse you um you are punished through emotional or physical abuse including emotional blackmail hitting or beating so something didn't work you didn't do something they wanted you to do um you may you may have been a flying you know they wanted you to be a flying monkey you didn't comply and so they'll you know withhold food from you they'll they'll talk to you entirely too much you know or they'll physically attack you uh throw stuff at you you know and so some of you come out of abusive homes you know with narcissistic parents um they gaslight at you so you guys know what gaslighting is in order to control you they use psychological manipulation tactic known as gaslighting what this means is that they would deliberately make you feel like you are crazy or cause you to doubt your sanity in order to gain the upper hand no different than a romantic relationship remember um, this led to a development of constant self-doubt during uh, childhood uh, that they parentified you as a child you were expected to parent your parent um, you you behave or you behave or as a surrogate parent to cater to their needs instead of catering to yours so it feels like your parent is your child it's like you have to parent your own parent and then in some in some situations um, you know if, if something has happened you know you become almost like their husband or wife you know and they handle you like a husband or wife uh you have to be very careful because some people you know some people on here were actually molested by their narcissistic parent because they they parentified you but they put you on an equal playing field as them and so they looked at you as a a, a a equal you know equal person to them parentified you you're parenting them you're caretaking them and then they felt like since they were in a, you were an extension of them you're equal to them and some of them have molested you guys and so some of you that I have not spoken out I you know I, I I commend you for being strong and even being on this video to acknowledge the fact you know you don't have to say anything but just to acknowledge the fact and to open up that door for me to say something to you about it um, if it does get, you know, if you guys are having triggers or if you have any emotions that go along with that, please stop the video now and just take a breather. You know, take a break, walk it off. As my friend always says, you know, uh, suck on a peppermint. Um, but whatever you do to have to calm yourself back down, because some of you guys have been through some horrific, horrific things with narcissistic parents. And it was just as abusive as the abusive narcissist that you were in a relationship with. And some of you guys are now looking back at, oh my gosh, my parent did the exact same thing that the narcissist did. And so, uh, you know, like I said, if you're triggered or you're getting emotional, just stop the video, take a break, take a breather, and then, you know, come back to the video a little later, you know, if that's overwhelming. Um, so I, I, I do, you know, I want to make sure that, I, that I'm compassionate enough and I understand, you know, have enough empathy to understand what you guys are going through, okay? Um, so number 14, they have a favorite or golden child. We'll skip over that uh, because we talked about that before. They react intensely to any form of criticism. And so if you, if, did, if you ever criticize your mother or father, you know, the general reaction is, you know, of a narcissistic parent is they likely to, to uh, react in an extreme way, just like the, the person you were attached to, just the person that you in a relationship. Uh, they'll scream at you. They'll, they're likely to physically hurt you, smacking, throwing something, something, you know, uh, but 
they can't handle criticism so they can't handle you telling them that no you're not perfect basically you're not perfect you know uh, or that you may be wrong about something and especially as a child you know that you're wrong and they're looking at you like you're a child you don't know what you're talking about uh, they projected their bad behavior on you for example they were ar argument that you uh that that they will hysterically scream at you so they get to it they, they just lose it you know how dare you talk to your mother that way go to your room or how dare you talk to your father way get get out of my face uh, uh we'll talk after you stop screaming at me and they're actually the ones screaming at you um they will never display any empathy so it's like they never they, they couldn't really sympathize or empathize with you it's like they didn't really care like you're a parent but there's no connection with you um and they're they're completely focused on themselves you can talk to them and after you get through spilling your heart out they'll just turn the situation back to yeah because when i went through that and and i did this you know and i did this and you're like wait a minute you're my parent you're supposed to console me but their whole focus turns back around to them well you know i went through that and i you know and i uh, let's see they always got the correct they're never wrong um let's see they're likely to present a perfect family image to outsiders uh, so they go the great length to make him look like to make the family look and, and to look like a very loving, successful family. Uh, and they keep but they those are the covert ones. You know, they've got to, you know, the appearance, the illusion. And so that leads me to say this, you know, um, so with that coming out of a situation like that, some of you um, and which cause you to be almost like a magnet, like you glow, you know, and, and, it, and, and it like attracts the narcissist because they come in and then they fill in these places that they sense in you. And so some of the problems that you may experience, not all of them, you know, because we can go on and on and on. And I just don't want to be on here so long. Uh, but I do want to say this, you know, some of the problems you may struggle with is like codependency and other relationships, weakness in your sense of self. You know, you feel weak. Um, poor interpersonal boundaries and the ability to say no. So you have a problem telling people no, because no always, the reaction to the no was always some type of berating, you know, some type of feelings of feeling inadequate or questioning your own self, whether or not, you know, you question your own, you know, your own self, but to be able to tell people no, it's like, I can't make you dislike me. If I say no, you're not gonna like me. And this is how you've been trained to think chronic guilt or shame, you always feel guilty or shame, especially saying no, you know, um, emptiness, trust issues, um, inability to express or handle emotions. So, you know, uh, stress, high emotions, confrontation is something that you guys may feel very uh, sensitive to, uh, anxiety and depression, you know, and, and being a people pleaser, that, that becomes, you know, the problem with the no. And so some of you have become, you know, and this is not the, the end of the list, there's more to it, but a lot of you come out of narcissistic families with, with mothers and fathers that are narcissists, you know, and some of you, uh, you know, your your whole self-esteem has been tore up. And so you really desire to be loved by somebody. You really want to be validated. You really want to feel appreciated. You want to feel like someone cares. Someone wants to talk to you. Someone cares about your emotions. And so what happens is a lot of times you're, you, you become naive, you know, and so here comes this narcissist that they're listening to you as you're talking. And what happens is when you're wounded like that, a lot of times people want to get it off their chest. They want help. And so they, they talk and they talk about all that. And sometimes inappropriately talking to anybody about your business. You can't tell everybody your business. You have to find mentors and coaches and, and mental health providers that are trained and they can help you in that. Everybody is not, um, what what's the word I'm looking for? Everybody is not gifted enough or everyone is not, supposed to know all your business everybody can't help you and 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 giving the information to the wrong person like a narcissist they feed off of that so that you draw the image of what you want them to be so some of you have come from families like this that cause you to be susceptible to um you know to narcissist abuse and so i challenge you you know as a clinician as a coach i challenge you um and some of you is going to be hard for you to do challenge you get a journal and begin to look over your upbringing look at the developmental fate the, the stages of your life and look at some of the things look at the narcissist that you guys were with and then start journaling at the type of family you came out of what what was the rule what were you told what were the seeds that were planted what was the behavior you know that you witnessed you know it's nothing wrong you know 
it, for some people, you know, and I say it in counseling all the time, for some people, you have to cut off toxic family members. You're not going to be able to heal. You're not going to be able to recover unless you cut yourself off from family members. But they all obligate you. They make you feel guilty because you cut yourself off. But it's about you now. It's about you and healing. So get a journal and write down like some of the, and you'd be surprised, some of you guys that are wanting to write books, when you begin to journal, some people need to know, how did I get here? You may have that answer. And when you begin to write your own story down, you may answer someone's question. Because some people on here have asked, I don't understand how I got here. And so for some of you writing and journaling and writing how you got there and where did you come from in your family and some of the things that you've witnessed and how did you start thinking, it's almost like, you know, it's like, almost counseling yourself, you know, but to write and have to read what you're writing. And some of you have to prepare because it will be an emotional journey for you. So hopefully I answered that question. And thank you guys so much for tuning in. If you have not already, please subscribe to my YouTube channel. It is Dr. Carmen Bryant, Overcoming Narcissist Abuse. Hit the um, bell to make sure you can hear whenever I upload. I'll be on on Sundays between eight and nine o'clock Pacific time, which is West Coast. And I, uh, I am also, I do come on live on um, Facebook. I was having some technical difficulties, but I think I'm okay because I have two different cameras now, two different phones, and it seems to be working okay. Um, but do, you know, you can go to Psychological Health Consultants and Services. I do go live on there as well. And I usually post the, the videos on both channels. But please subscribe to the channel because sometimes I may not be able to get to the Facebook channel. And so as I travel, I'll only be able to come on live on YouTube when I'm traveling. So thank you guys once again. Thank you so much for your support. Thank you for the emails. Thank you for the comments. I really appreciate you guys. Thank you for the kings that are that are rising up, the kings that are coming out, and you're telling your stories. And not only that, I really appreciate you guys because when you guys come on live, you guys are really a supportive group. I'm really so honored that you guys would be on my Facebook, I'm not Facebook, but on my YouTube channel, and that you would come on with me. And it's just the love and support that you guys show to each other, you know. And then the men that are coming out, and you're giving positive affirmation, and you're really giving these women and hope and making them feel good and giving advice. You know, I challenge some of you men that are on here, some of the kings that are on here, go through some of my videos and look at the comments that are on there from a lot of the women. Some of the women need to hear a man say something positive as well. You know, and some of you, I, I really encourage you, make some comments on some of the women's comments. You know, give them a word of encouragement. Say something positive, you know, from a male's point of view. You know, give them your 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 opinion. And I know Mr. RN is really good at that and Mr. Um, um, uh, Naylor, um, and, and hopefully he's still on there, you know, he was really good on making comments. And, and I have some um, new gentlemen on here, uh, uh, some kings that have come on here. and They're making comments and they're supporting these women, you know, and women, make sure you go out there and you support the men on these comments as well. Thank you guys. I'm so honored. Thank you so much. And I will talk to you guys on Sunday. Be tuned. Be ready. I'm coming. Hopefully I'll be able to get in a little early, but I do have obligations. I have commitments on Sundays. And so I'm a busy lady. And if I have not gotten to your emails, if I have not gotten to your comments, please forgive me. I just have a lot coming in. I mean, it's to a point where I think I have to buy storage space in my voicemail and on my messages in my, in my email box. But I really appreciate you guys because you guys make this happen. So as my friend always says, go and be great.